Okay, so who likes making t-shirt yarn? I love it. I love to be eco-friendly and use up old stuff. However, I do like things to be nice and when I make the t-shirt yarn based on the usual YouTube um, tutorials that are there, what I don't like is having seams in my work. So every so often I'm crocheting along, I'm knitting along and then all of a sudden I've got this big seam. Now a lot of people do it that way and it works for them but that doesn't work for me. So I am going to show you how to make it a bit more professional looking like the stuff that you would buy with less seams. Um, it's a wee bit more work perhaps but worth it for me 100%. I make necklaces and I definitely don't want to have um, seams in my necklaces. I'm going to use a vest today just so that it's nice and easy. What I'm going to do is um, cut away all of the seams so we're just left with the square, two squares to work with. Okay, so here is my first piece. I'm just going to do it this way. And um, there's two methods that I use to create my seamless um, yarn, and I'm going to show you both. They're, bo they're both really, really easy. And usually, t shirt yarn is about an inch thick, so you don't need to measure it, you just use your eye. And uh, the first method I'm going to do is just cutting into my fabric an inch from the edge and I'm just going to follow like a, a maze I'm going to work in a square all the way into the centre Okay, so that is your yarn, okay? So you can give it a wee pull through. Now, what you need to do now is, rather than having edges, which for me is like the worst thing, now you've got little corners or little extra fabric, if you like, in your work. So to get around that, all you need to do is just cut around your corners just so that it takes away the edge a little so you're literally just taking away the corner okay so it takes more time there's no getting away from that um, it's not as quick as the other methods that are demonstrated on YouTube, but you know, it's quality over quantity in my book every time. So I'm afraid I would rather take longer um, to produce the yarn and get a better finished product at the end. You know, it's, it's never going to look perfect or as good as the you know the manufactured t-shirt yarn but it is still much better than having a big seam every two seconds okay so carry on to the end now what I do is say for example you want to add that on to your other the, the front or the back all I do to join it well depending on what I'm, I'm using 
I would just weave it in um, and add it into my work the same way as I would do if I was using a needle of yarn and knitting or crochet. But if you want to join it, then you can't, all I do is just put a tiny little joining stitch, just sew the two bits together, just to keep them together and work that through my work. It's far more invisible than having those big seams in there. So that's one method. Um, and it's like a labyrinth and it goes round and round and round and round and round until you get into a circle. So you have less edges on the outer um, sides of the square and more as you get further in. The alternative is, if I show you quickly, is a kind of back and forth motion. Where if we use the other side, like this. Okay. Then what you're doing is you are in a straight line, the same as before, you are cutting up and stopping an inch before you get to the edge of the opposite, the opposite edge, okay? So you've got one strip and you've got that joined on, okay? Then you take it and you flip it over. Okay, and then you leave that where it is, because obviously you want to have a, a continuous line. You move another inch along from the top of this edge, and then you work another strip. Stopping an inch before here, and then flip it so this is a kind of back and forth technique where you just go back and forth and you know you're never going to be able to create a perfect width because material is quite um, movable however take your time if you want it really good you can determine the thickness as well, which is another great factor in creating your own yarn. Is depending on what you're making, you might want it really, really thick, two inches wide, say for example, which is why I say in my patterns, etc., that no two balls of t-shirt yarn are exactly the same because when you get them in, if you buy them on the cone, they're generally kind of rolled, rolled up. Um, and some can be as big as two inches wide, others can be one inches wide, which actually does change the tension of your project a little bit. But it's part of the fun. So carry on until you get to the end. And you're doing the same as you did before, where you are, this time you've got a bigger corner, you've got a more prominent corner, you've actually got, you know, two corners to cut round. So again, it's just um, taking your um, fabric and just cutting all the way round the corner. Now, as you work, you can tuck these corners in, because generally what happens is when you pull it out, it, it smooths off a wee bit. And you can see that it just kind of wraps wraps around and as you're knitting or crocheting it wraps around like that so it's much more invisible than having a big seam so um i'm not going to show you um how to do that i would say give it a try but the backwards and forwards technique i'm going to use as well because be inventive about what materials that you can find that you can use now these are my husband's and these are um they were sort of joggy bottoms that he doesn't like anymore but it, it's really gorgeous grey marl fabric and look at the length you know you've got six feet um, height trousers here so I'm going to use this back and forth method to go up and down and up and down to create me some nice t-shirt yarn with not that many corners 
um, nice and seamless. So I hope that helps.